Hey everyone, it's Anne again, and I'm back with my episode four of my Chatelaine Diaries. I'm going to be talking about the Desert Mandala Chatelaine that I've been working on. Um, the prior episodes have covered the center uh, section, and we're going to talk about that again today. Uh, just to get you up to speed on what I have accomplished. Last time that I showed the project, I was, uh, I had finished down to about here in this desert sunset section. So I have completed this interior portion, except for a little bit of backstitching that I want to do on the coyote, uh, as well as the hawk. Now, both of them are one over one. Oops, sorry. And I've started the back stitching on the coyote. Um, I've finished this side of him, which I think helps kind of helps the curve um, be a little less choppy. You can see over here where I haven't done it. Um, it's not quite as smooth looking. So Martina gives you the option in this pattern to include the back stitch or not. And I'm going to do that for these two little guys that are both one over one. I finished up the hawk this time. I have done the back stitching over here, so the lightning strike is finished. And I've put a little bit more time in on these um, floral motifs right here. I guess I should also mention that... Um, this section is almost completely done. Um, the spaces that you see here, here, and here are for little treasures, um, as is the center in these two flowers. And there'll be more beads along here, which is what those spaces are left. I have a couple of, um, there's a different color blue that goes in. It's like five or six stitches here and like two stitches over here. So those are both DMC colors that I will um, do all at once and finish up. So I feel like I'm making pretty good progress on this. I thought I would talk to you guys today a little bit about some of the colors of the hand dyed flosses because I have, hands down, I think that's the question that I get most often with this. So um, first off, I wanted to kind of answer a question that Sarah over at Stitch and Mommy had about the difference between the Karen water lilies and the Karen wildflowers. So if you look at this right here, this is ginger snap in the water lilies. So that's the silk. Um, this is what's called for in the pattern. And I also picked up a skein of the wildflowers, which is their hand dyed cotton. So you can see both of them have um, kind of similar highlights and lowlights in this sort of reddish brown right here. You can see there's a little bit here and a little bit here. Um, this is more of like a pearl cotton uh, compared to DMC. And you can see it does take color differently. I, I'm, it's the nature of the beast. Um, cotton always dyes differently than silk or wool. Um, so even though this is probably dyed, quote, the same, and it is the same color, ginger snap for both of them, um, you can see the difference both in the depth of color as well as also how the plies look. Let me just show you the tags here. So water lilies is the silk and wildflowers is the cotton. So for sure you could substitute if you wanted to save a little bit of money. The wildflowers is still more expensive than DMC, but um, you do get a little more variegation in the color um, on, the, on the floss. It is different, it's not matchy-matchy, but that gives you an idea of how those two colors or two different um, bases take the dye. And then I wanted to talk about some of the silks that I am using. Um, 
The colorway that's here in the flowers, the flower petals, this pink right here, um, is very subtly variegated. And I'm going to show you what it looks like. Um, this is Silken Colors Antique Rose. And so that is the colorway just in the skein. So there are some kind of brighter magenta sections, and then there's darker burgundy, and then there's a little bit of kind of lighter pink. I think one of the things to keep in mind when you're trying to decide if a colorway is going to be worth spending the money on, you know, the this section right here, these little flowers, um, the flower petals are very small. So while you can see there is some variation in each of those petals, it's not huge. I think if this colorway were being used for a larger section, like let's say if this pink right here, which is a DMC color, um, I want to say 3727, but don't quote me on that. So if, for instance, this was charted using this hand paint, because of the long runs of color back and forth, I think that you would really notice the swapping out if you were to swap out a hand paint for a large section like that. Um, on the flower petals, maybe not so much. You know, I think you could, that's definitely an area where if you studied the chart and it wasn't being used very much, you could easily substitute there if you wanted to. Um, same thing with this colorway that is this bright green right here and right here. It is called Emerald. It is a water lilies and that is what it looks like. Sorry for the glare. I'm trying to get some decent light in here today. Um, so it shows up much more variegated in the skein, but it's a very small part of these, these floral, um, motifs it's just this little corner here and here and right here that kind of brighter green is emerald now by contrast if you look at where i've started over here on this petal so each of these little floral petals is kind of outlined with this colorway which is highly variegated and let me show you what that one looks like. So this is blue grass and it is uh, Gloriana. So huge difference in the colorways um, that are in this, very highly variegated. There's chestnut, there's bright green, there's bright blue, kind of that darker blue. Um, so you can see in this colorway, all the different colors that are being um, that are showing up here now again this is a fairly small area but you do actually see the variegation stitched in this one as opposed to you know the flowers flower petals which um, because it's a tone it's multiple tones of the same color meaning there's a light pink a dark pink a medium pink this one shows up as less variegated when it's stitched as opposed to bluegrass because it's got blue, chestnut, green, emerald. It's got a whole bunch of different colors. So to kind of compare that concept in terms of dyeing, let me scooch these over. So again, here's the emerald, right? It's all different shades of green, but it is still all green versus bluegrass that has the chestnut and it's just got a whole bunch of different colors in it. I don't think that you could call the bluegrass a specific one color. So again, this will take a little bit of research, but if you know, for instance, that the floss that is being called for is um, tonal gradations of the same color, meaning multiple shades of green or multiple shades of pink, you could get by with not um, choosing to buy the hand-painted silk. For something like this, 
there's just absolutely no way that you can reproduce this with a single shade. Just not going to happen. Um, another kind of illustration to this is for this magenta right here. To me, this looks almost like a single color the whole way around. I mean, there's very, very subtle differences in some sections, like right here is maybe a little lighter and right here is maybe a little darker. So this is another um, Water Lilies. It's grape. And again, you can see it's kind of all in that same... Um, wine color family so I think it shows up less as a ver as a true variegated floss than one that would have this level of colors in it and then the final thing that I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about this is a sort of it's the word I'm looking for dyers color lesson thing. Anyway, uh, what I had noticed about how Martina has picked colors for the very subtle, almost gradient feel to all of these greens, she's done something really clever here. So in this section, there are one, let me get in here a little closer and I'm going to sneeze. Sorry, you guys. <clears throat> Sorry, allergy season. Okay, in this section there are three greens. There's this green right here, which is emerald. There's this uh, colorway that we is bluegrass that we talked about. And there's another color here called camouflage. So let me show you those three greens together. Camouflage, camouflage is a silken color. Okay, there's that. You saw bluegrass. And you've seen emeralds. So, interestingly, what she's done, and let me organize these so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. Uh, glare. Scooch. Sorry, I hope I'm not making everybody dizzy. Okay, back to our example. She's outlined the top edge right here with this. Um, this is actually a color called Pond Scum, and it is a hand-dyed silk, but it's um, not very variegated. So she starts with this color here. And if you look, a little bit of this color can be found in this shade. There's some of that kind of... Um, brighter yellowy green in the highlights here. And it's also found in bluegrass right here. So she's able to tie this piece together where you don't, you're not, uh, your eye does not see this as a whole bunch of distinct separate outlines for each of these flower petals. It wants to optically blend the greens and the yellows to just give you kind of a depth of shading. Um, so these little tiny flecks that are in the bluegrass, and I'm gonna scoot you guys back over here, right? There's the bright green here that kind of has a little bit of the yellow. That is also found right here in camouflage and here. And then the brighter greens here and here are picked up in the brighter greens of emerald. So by using these three colors, even though this is a highly variegated one, she's pulling colors from this more tonal and this more tonal hand paint to kind of pull together all of those colors and make your eye want to see these as just an interesting green, not a highly variegated one. So I, it was just an interesting color exercise to see how she's picked colors that have little pops of each other to make your eye understand how these three very distinct separate colors go together in that section. 
And I think if you go back up here and look at this one that I'm working on, where I've outlined the where the petals are gonna go in bluegrass, it's very hard to see uh, um, this amount of variegation by the time it's surrounded by those other colors. And you can pick them out, I think, now that I've pointed them out to you. Um, but otherwise, you know, this almost appears like this is all one color that I've been working with here and that it kind of blends in here and a little bit around here. So really great use of color. Um, I think that's one of the most amazing things about how the chatelaines are worked and, um, you know, the very subtle um, shifts in color that you get. I think you could probably, if you if you didn't want to purchase the silks and you didn't mind doing a little experimentation, you could probably do something similar if you did some blended threads because these are all two over two. And there's no reason why you couldn't um, put like a darker green DMC with a chestnut brown DMC and do this as a blended filament or a, a blended thread as opposed to the hand paint because if you look here in the sunset um, the way that this section is worked that's so subtle is this right here is one DMC color and this is one DMC color and there's a little section right here where you blend threads you use one strand of this and one strand of that and it gives that very soft gradation of color. So like this stitch right here is blended thread. There's a couple in here. So I think if you were adventurous and you didn't want to buy the silks, you could do something similar in these sections to make it appear that you've used a uh, hand painted thread just simply by using two strands of separate colors, one of each color of the DMC. Um, you probably have to be prepared to do a little bit of frogging uh, every so often, but um, I do think that's one way that you could kind of um, manipulate the colors and still wind up with a little bit more depth than you would with just a plain two-stranded DMC of the same color. So I hope that makes sense. Um, again, I'm just really enjoying this and I'm loving making these videos for you guys. I've got a little bit more time in this rotation to spend on this guy today. So my plan is to work on this section right here. Try to get a little bit more of that done. Um, in the hopes that next time I touch this, which won't be till October, I will be able to completely have the center finished except for the beads and be ready to move on to the outer, um, the next kind of ring around here that will be cactuses. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave those for me. I'm always glad to try to answer those. Um, if there's any other questions you have from prior videos, of course, Again, feel free to leave me a comment or message me. Uh, I will do my best to see if I can be clearer or answer other questions. Uh, until October, I will see you guys then, and I hope you have a great rest of September as a stitchy month. Take care, guys. Bye.